from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering WTG Transform 2018. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of WTG Transform 2018. Really excited, we've actually gotten to speak to quite a few end users here at the show, which is always one of our favorite things to do on theCUBE. Joining me, first time on the program, Todd McElroy, who's Vice President and Systems Engineering Manager at Eastern Bank. Thanks so much for joining me. You're welcome, glad to be here. All right, so Todd, first of all, how many of these shows have you been to for, with Winslow? This is my first WTG event, yeah. but uh, I tend to go to several, you know, smaller type conferences per year to kind of keep on top of the technology network and, you know, uh, with so much rapid innovation these days, you, you know, you need to get out there and talk to people and learn little tidbits of information, each one, uh, do a couple of conferences each year, but uh, that's about the extent of it. Yeah, you said technology is changing really fast, which is great. Is uh, you know, my, my joke usually is like, oh, well, you're in financial. Yeah. Things don't change fast. There's <laughs> nothing going on uh, in your space. What, what, yeah. what is happening uh, in, in your world I these mean, days? I mean, Eastern Bank is a 200-year-old uh, bank. We're celebrating our 200th anniversary this month. Hey, congratulations. A big, uh, a big uh, celebration next, uh, next week, so, uh, you know, a lot of traditional um, architecture, a lot of, uh, you know, it's a very large bank, it's an $11 billion bank, but very, has a small community feel as well, and even our team is very tight and very um, close together, so, but, you know, even though we have, uh, it's an older bank, we have a lot of innovation and technology going on. Uh, in the last few years especially. Yeah, it, it's one of those things, you know, you said if, if I was going to start a company or have started a company in the last five or 10 years, yep. well, here's the technology I'd choose, here's the applications I'd roll out. It's a 200 year old bank, yep. you know, you know, walk us through a little bit about the you know pros and cons of uh, of, of having that uh, that legacy, if you will. Well, I mean, we have a, we've been around like I said for 200, uh, 200 years, and even a lot of the technology we have on premises has a lot of legacy applications. So we have to keep supporting that for a long time. Um, so we're, we're we're challenged with keeping those older systems up and running, as well as providing new technologies to the business so they can innovate and bring new and better products to, to market. So, um, it's bo bo both both yeah, worlds. All right, yeah. tell me what's what's under your purview uh, when it comes to the bank. When it comes to the bank, I manage the system engineering team. So I manage the team that does servers and virtualization, storage. Uh, we're getting into the cloud as well. So there's a big push to start innovating in the cloud as well to allow our developers to use services to help them innovate faster and better and that sort of thing. Okay, so in the keynotes this morning, there's the discussion really of hybrid cloud. Yes. When you say in the cloud, that tends to make me think of public cloud or maybe some SaaS in there. Yep. What, t tell me what cloud means to, to your organization. Well, right now, I mean, our cloud footprint is primarily software as a service type applications like Office 365. We had a major migration to, you know, move our email and Skype and those, uh, you know, and users facing applications to the cloud. Uh, but we're also you know, trying to um, you know, expand our footprint in, into the cloud so we can enable services to our customers, our internal customers, to innovate as well. So that's why we're looking at technologies like Nutanix, the rate of innovation that they're bringing to market uh, to now allow our developers to be more self-sufficient, uh, provide the platform for them, and allow them to innovate and develop on a platform, both on-premises to keep it secure, and as well as in the cloud to keep it secure as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. it's interesting. I, I was actually talking to some of the Nutanix team here, yeah. and been talking to customers that are doing development, you know, playing with containers, things like that. Uh, a couple of years ago, if you talked about developers, you'd say, oh, okay, they're building something in the public cloud, because right. uh, that's where it is. Help, help us you know, understand wh how you decide, you know, what do I start playing with in the cloud? What, you know, where does the Nutanix fit into that, that discussion? Yeah, I mean, we're a relatively new Nutanix customer. Uh, within the last year or two, uh, we started with a small proof of concept to give um, some of our workloads for the developers to work on. Uh, but now we've, you know, expanded upon that. It's now become our primary production platform. We're trying to take a lot of our older hypervisor and virtualization technology and move it into Nutanix. So we're trying to grow that footprint because of the, the amount of innovation that they're bringing uh, with Calm and Flow and all those sorts of new services just going to enable us to build a platform that they can develop on a lot better. Great, and from, uh, you know, what virtualization are you using on, on this? For, for, the, for the Nutanix, like are you using VMware? No, we're a, a HV? HV, native okay. HV, yeah. yeah. Uh, and using all HV? Or? All HV, yep. Okay, were yep. you VMware before or? Not at Eastern, no. Oh, okay. We have a small VMware footprint for a specialized application, uh, but the rest of our virtualization platform is Hyper-V. 
Okay, and yes. you said you're, you're running in production. Yep. You know, does Nutanix run all of your on-premises applications, or? No, it doesn't. I mean, we have a lot of still, um, you know, physical infrastructure as well. But anything net new is going towards Nutanix. We have some older uh, hardware that we're, you know, aging out as as those age out, and we have to expand, you know, new hardware. We're going to go to Nutanix. Yeah, platform. you've got some i series sitting in the back. I'm sure the old AS 400s. Yeah. Uh, most <laughs> banks have things exactly, like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Great. Uh, and t t tell us a little more from a cloud standpoint. How, how do you how do you determine what goes where? Well, we haven't really determined that yet. We're really in the early stages of, of our own adoption to the cloud. So we really are taking the first steps in you know making sure we are governing it properly and we're finding the right use case for it. So really, we're trying to find the right use case for our for developers. We had some meetings recently and we outlined a, f a few things that we could target. So we're really taking you know our first steps, getting our own. Um, our competencies up with our own engineers and our developers and making sure we, you know, learning from the people that have already done it and you know, learning from maybe some mistakes that I've made and, and you, using partners like Winslow to help us get there. Great, yeah. can, can you speak a little bit about from an operational standpoint? You talked about developers, yep. you've got public cloud, you've got, you've got, got your infrastructure, how, how do those all play together? Well, today, I mean, we, system engineering, my department, is really the go-to department when they request a service, request a new server, request a new uh, application to be built. We're, we interface with a lot of different teams at the bank, uh, so we're really the, the go-to team that is going to you know, help them innovate. They know what applications they need to run. They know they, they need, you know, they make requests for, for services. We're trying to reduce the, uh, um, the time to fulfillment, so allow, allowing them to have a platform that they can build on innovate and be more um, self-sufficient. Yeah, uh, you bring up a really interesting thing. The, the How long people th you know, think it will take from when I ask for something to yep. where I get it. Yep. Used to be, you know, I put in a support ticket, you know, 24, 48 hours, that was great. Some things it's like, oh heck, we're going to have to buy a server right. or you know, allocate different pieces. Uh, Today, you know, it, it's come on, it's it's instantaneous, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, everybody's ready to go. Talk, ready to talk go. to that, you know, the good and the bad of that from your standpoint. Well, I mean, that's what we, we want to be in the business of allowing them to be self-sufficient, build the platform for them. We don't want to be managing building VMs over and over and over again. It, it, we want to temp templatize things and allow them to be uh, on their own timeline to be able to develop, deploy, break down. So we're try really trying to innovate in that way. Um, you know, I, th I think that's you know our job as as an engineering team to provide that to the business so they can innovate more, more quickly. Yeah, the, love love the idea of self service. The concern always is sprawl. It used mm -hmm. to be, oh, I stuck a server in the corner and then I forgot about it. Yep. Now VMs pop up and I forget about them all the time. So you know, doesn't the yeah. CFO ever come say, hey, am I really and using that's all a, this a stuff? A big driving factor yeah. is cost. You know, making sure you don't you're not going to drive up a huge cost in, in the cloud and, and uh, so I think governance and managing that and using tools and using. Uh, some of the um, use cases and some of the knowledge that others have been before to help you build that framework so you're not you know, breaking the budget or whatnot. And you find the right use case, whether it's on-premises cloud or in the uh, public cloud. Great, uh, yeah. last thing Todd, as, as you look forward kind of through the, the rest of 2018, any interesting new technologies you're looking at or other, other, other things coming down the pike other than celebrating the big 200th anniversary? <laughs> well, I mean, it's all, you know, I'm really excited that you know, the bank has really made a commitment to move um, towards you know, innovation and, um, and using cloud technology, so I'm really excited to be part of the team that's going to help innovate and drive the business forward in that regard. All right, well, Todd McElroy, really appreciate the, the, the updates here. Uh, Eastern Bank, 200-year-old company, yep. driving innovation forward. This has been our live coverage here uh, from WTG Transform 2018. Be sure to check out thecube.net for all the shows we're going to be at, all the you know, replays that we've been at before for Stu Miniman. Once again, thank you so much to Winslow Technology Group, their partners, and of course, all the customers. Thanks so much for the viewers also for watching theCUBE.